Sneaky healing session. So, we're going to begin by lighting these candles just to set the tone for this sacred healing. speak with them about their needs and preferences and you want to listen and be present with them that's really really important you might be the only person who actually listens to them today so treat them with the utmost care and consideration and really respect this interaction they're putting their vulnerability and healing in your hands which takes a great deal of courage. So greet their courage with respect, honor their vulnerability, always maintain boundaries, always remind them that Reiki is a complementary healing modality and that they should seek professional medical advice for any issues that they may have. So ensuring that they're comfortable with the energetic tools that you might use during the session is vital. So do they have any sensitivities to aromas? You could find out what, what kind of scents they prefer. Here, we've developed a blend based on our client's preferences. So we're gonna do a little spray of this really peaceful moon water. It has a little bit of essential oil. Ensure they're comfortable with the temperature. Letting them know that there are freshly laundered blankets should the knees or need arise. Okay. Oh, let's initiate the three pillars of Reiki, starting with a gasho meditation. So you can ask them to place their hands at their heart space for this. You could do gasho. Yeah, prayer hands, or you could just have them place their hands on their heart space, yeah, like that, very gently, whatever is most comfortable, and then place your own hands at your heart space in prayer hands, gosh, you can even start to attune your energy to theirs by placing a hand on their shoulder, I'm just connecting to your breath for a moment. Good. And then, with Gasho, you want to focus your attention on the space where your middle fingers meet. Or you can focus it on where your palms are kissing, that space between your palms. For you, just on the space between your hands and your heart center. And then slowly and deliberately, you can chant the Reiki precepts or simply say them once. Now you can either repeat them after me to yourself or aloud, or you can just let the words wash over you. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. Just for today, I will not anger. Just for today, 
I will not anger. Just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I will be honest. Just for today, I will be honest. I will live and work honestly. I will live and work honestly. Just for today, I will be grateful. Just for today, I will be grateful. Just for today, I will be kind. Just for today, I will be kind. Kind to all living beings. Kind to all living beings. Very good. And you can, as a practitioner, lift your thumbs to your third eye. You just want to ask for that Reiki to flow. You can say a prayer or set an intention for the well-being of your friend or your, your guest. So on behalf of your highest, wisest self and loving comfort and perfect balance. I wish to channel Reiki healing energy. Seems like you have a lot flowing already <laughs> to help align your chakras and bring peace to your mind, body, and spirit. And you can say, I am a perfect conduit for Reiki healing energy. You can do a slight bow. And then we can move on to the second pillar of Reiki. We're going to do a scan here. We'll tune in one more time to connect. If you're more comfortable with it, you can place your hands at your sides. Just want to scan down their body. Notice if you feel any energetic shifts or blockages. Yep. <laughs> you can feel that too. Your brows furrowing right when they get moving. So we'll definitely come back to the throat space. What I noticed there, the sensation was just sort of almost like an electric pulse in the tips of my fingers as I'm scanned over. I also felt cool sensation on my palm. Yeah, particularly here. Oh. So I'm placing my dominant hand over my heart space and my receptive hand gliding over. And you can also move down and see where you can feel the aura. That's another way of doing it. Just checking in and seeing how thick and buoyant and full the aura is. Or you can simply scan down and notice any shift. Okay. We're just taking some inventory here. Okay. I have a couple of balances today. That's okay. Mm-hmm. So if you notice anything coming up, if you notice heat, cold, vibrations, tingles, if you see images 
or you hear any messages, then you're going to come back to that space where you can spend a little bit of time in that space during this aspect, during this part. If there's any uncertainty or you're getting mixed signals, like I got a little bit of mixed signal in the sacral and the root, then you can use your pendulum for clarity or you can use other forms of dousing as well. So you can place your receptive hand over the space that you'd like a little bit more clarification with. Okay, great. Yeah, it doesn't seem, it seems like you're not sure. It seems like we're not sure about the root chakra. Okay. Okay. Okay, so root chakra is underactive. So going through and asking if an area is out of balance, you can ask like that. Any yes or no questions? Is the root chakra out of balance? Yes. Is it overactive? No. Is it underactive? Yes. So we'll, we now know that we want to activate the root chakra and we can do this in a number of different ways, but we'll definitely do hands-on healing in that space. And you can definitely use other tools like sound and vibration, sound healing to really activate the space. And if it was overactive, we just want to soothe. Okay, so once you uh, assess the areas of imbalance, then you can begin the treatment, which is the third pillar of Reiki. So, like I said, noticing an area that's out of alignment, the throat, the chest, I think the lungs. I think the lungs particularly here on the right side. Out of alignment. We noticed a little bit in the sacral, but when I checked with the pendulum, it said that that was okay. So we're going to be primarily doing root, uh, probably some solar plexus, chest, and throat. So again, with these areas of imbalance, you might use some sound healing to unblock this space and get some movement flowing. You could also use crystals or aromatherapy just to sort of boost. So we're going to start with a little bit more of our spray and I'm just going to spritz outside of these areas, okay? space with healing vibrations once we've used our esoteric tools. So before embarking on Cheerio or the treatment, you could light a candle to ignite your specific intention for the healing session. Now that you're aware of any imbalances or specific blockages, so you can use that to guide the intention that you've set, the in information and inventory that you've just collected from your scan to set the intention in addition to any information that they've shared with you before the session began. You know, some common ones before Reiki session are, I'm struggling with confidence, I've been feeling ungrounded, I've been having trouble sleeping, you know, there's all kinds of things that you could help people with for a Reiki session. But again, just encouraging them to seek professional medical advice and using this as a complementary healing modality. So we'll light our candle and set our intention. I like covering my hand inside of their heart space. So on behalf of your highest, wisest, most empowered and aligned self, in loving comfort and perfect balance. I wish to conduct this Reiki session to 
now balance your throat, heal your chest and lungs, send positive lifted vibrations to your solar plexus and to activate your root chakra. So we really want you to feel safe, comfortable, confident, healthy and loved and want to balance your throat. So this could have to do with, I know you're moving through a little bit of an illness, so that could be it, but it could also be a blockage when it comes to expression, when it comes to, uh, you know, expressing our truth or maybe specific communication that could be because you're struggling with a little, you know, some throat stuff. And then you want to leave it open for them to set their intention on the flame, using the element of fire to help carry and ignite that intention. So if you'd like to clarify or specify or even set your own intention, you can look at the flame or you can just envision it in your mind's eye, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And just nod your head when you're done. So throughout the session, envision light filling up your body and then pouring out of your palms, filling up your client and swirling all around the room. Okay, so I'm going to begin with some sound healing. And I'm going to start with a tuning fork just to see if we can balance these areas before we do our hands-on healing. Really just melt into the Reiki table and envision any worries from the day just draining down your body and out your feet. Draining out, and you can relax your brow. Like I didn't even know I was far away with my breath. Okay. This is a 528 hertz tuning fork. I'm going to place the handle on the areas of imbalance. Nice and gentle. Does that feel comfortable? Our bodies are so wise. Dowsing, using a pendulum is about connecting to that wisdom that exists within us. We just want to get out of our own way and allow the healing to begin. We must have set a strong intention. That candle is really talking to us. in the tuning fork outside of the, just kind of beneath the hips. It's an access point that I like to use for the root chakra. Can you feel the vibration? That's good. On to the crown, just for good measure.
Allow your intuition to guide you as you do this healing. I was going to move on to the rattle, but I think I'm going to use a singing bowl. I'm going to place it here. Let me get my bigger singing bowl, actually. We'll get our solar plexus singing bowl. And place, this, place that right on your solar plexus. I'll be right back. So it's a little bit heavy. You'll just let me know if it's uncomfortable, okay? Okay. Just to flow through you. I'm actually going to play the singing bowl just outside of your solar plexus here. a rattle now and I'm going to use this seed rattle it's a little bit more intense than our owl rattle here and I'm going to use this to really activate the root chakra I think there's something very grounding about rattles anyway so we'll primarily work in the root here some selenite just to cleanse anything that might have come up or shaking things up and sometimes we're sifting through so things might kind of come to the surface we just want to be available to clear and cleanse and you could see as I was doing that I was pulling energy that was being shaken up and any of your visions that you care to share with your your client or your guests you just want to make sure that they're empowered and you can also empower them to you know practice this imagery as well so if you notice something like I was doing some pulling in the throat space you could encourage them to join you with that so say something like I'm going to envision a dark coiled rope in your throat 
specifically here on this side, on your left side. And I'm just going to envision pulling that dark rope out. So if you wanna just help me with that visualization until it's completely gone and then I'm gonna cast it into the, the flame. Did that make sense to you? Tummy grumbling is a really great sign that Reiki is flowing if they fall asleep, or maybe you just start to notice that they're twitching a little bit, that's another great sign. Encourage them that that's not only normal, it's a great thing, it just means that they're being really receptive to the energy, or that they're hungry. Give me a little bit of pop. I'm gonna um, just clear your feet, the bottom of your feet. So just taking the wand, just outside of the feet like that. Clearing and cleansing. Selenite is such a great stone for clearing. And Okay, we're gonna envision the same thing here. A coiled dark rope. And I'm just going to pull that out. And then cast it into the flame and then clear. Before we do our hands-on healing, I'm going to create a little crystal grid. I have this clear quartz cluster. I'm going to place this just outside of the crown. Is that comfortable? Very activating, amplifying. I'm going to place this amethyst on the third eye, like so. Is that comfortable? Okay. I'm going to place this rose quartz in the heart space. Is that okay there? I'm going to place this tiger's eye on the solar plexus. And I'm gonna get two other stones, okay? So I said I would get two, but I ended up getting four. So I'm gonna place the Shivalingam, great for balancing yin and yang energies. I'm gonna place this actually just at your low back, so if you can lift up here just a touch. Okay, is that comfortable? Okay. Then I have this soda light just to balance in the throat space. I'm gonna put that underneath the neck. And then I have two stones that I'm gonna stack on either side here. Both are for vitality. Turquoise, raw turquoise, just to kind of defibrillate that energy and invite in this beautiful it's, it's, it's a physical healing. So this is that deep physical healing. I'm gonna place this underneath your right shoulder there. Is that comfortable? Okay. And then this is a Chinese writing stone. And this is a great stone for vital life force energy. Wonderful stone to use in all of your Reiki sessions. Let me move this around here. Great, you could move through with a clear quartz point and activate all of these stones. And now I'll do a bit of hand on So I'm going to gently place my hands 
on the neck, on the sides of the neck. Being very, very gentle with this space. I'm very familiar with this client, so that's why I'm comfortable placing my hands on his neck. But if you're, you know, unsure, or just to be on the safe side, you could just hover your hand hooked underneath their chin and send that energy into their throat space like so. So we're not using the standard hand positions here, we're really just using the Usui intuitive guidance of Chirio, the treatment, just allowing ourselves to be guided. And through the session, if you wanted to ensure that you're on the right track, we can do some dousing, you know, very quickly, just asking, am I on the right track? Great. I'm using your fingers in the 3D infinity symbol. It's a wonderful way of just connecting with your intuition and with your inner wisdom and guidance without having to get out your pendulum during a session. We can also draw the energy from a different chakra. So we can draw the energy from our heart chakra to balance and break through any blockages here in the throat space. You can pull this energy with your hands, or you could use a crystal to do it. Drawing this energy and filling the space up. Space feels very blocked here to me. I'm actually going to take the rose quartz and place this here as well. And there's Reiki healing light pouring out of my palms into your body, filling you up, sending light to all the dark places. Filling you with light. So much light that it bursts forth, filling the whole room with light. It seeps out of the crown of your head, out of the soles of your feet, the tips of your fingers, filling the whole room with light. Gentle healing light. And we're going to activate the solar plexus. We don't have to do that much healing here because I think the sound healing is done a lot. Feels more balanced. And again, you can check. Yep. It's pretty balanced here. I'm going to place the tiger's eye. Seems like it's not needed there anymore, so place that on the low belly. And then I like to use the hips as an entry or access point for the root chakra. Some people like using the hips for the sacral. I like using it for the root. I think it's nice. It's sort of just beneath the hips you can use. It's also a very, very comforting gesture. It's a simultaneously comforting and also empowering. Helps you feel safe and grounded and cared for. You can stay here for a long time. Or just a few more. Ok, 
Okay, so now to close the session, I like to seal the practice. So depending on the nature of our session, sometimes I will close with some cleansing. You can never go wrong there, selenite, or you could use some smudge, a bundle of herbs, you know, to cleanse any residual energy in the space. Or you could do some sound healing, you know, rattles, or rain stick, or tuning forks, chimes, singing bowls, just to seal in this healing. So I think I will close actually with our owl rattle. Let me seal all this in. I then like to close with affirmations for the different chakras. You are divine. You are connected. You are expressive. You are loved. You are strong. You are creative and emotionally balanced. You are safe. You are safe. You could do the seed or bija mantras. Or you could repeat the Reiki precepts. Once again, that's a nice way of bookending the session. So however you feel would support your client and their healing, just take a moment. And after you're completed, whatever it is that you're doing to seal the session, just take some time. It's nice to have some breathing room. Just a little bit of time before asking them to return to this present moment. Especially if they've been in a deep state of relaxation. But you do want to have some time at the end, you know, afterward to discuss your findings. Perhaps encourage them to do some healing work on their own and to check in with them and ask about their experience. They, to ground them back in the present, what you can do is you can press on their lower limbs. You can, you're going to want to gently squeeze. You can gently squeeze their feet, their legs, just to awaken their connection to the earth. You could say, I'm going to help bring you back to this present moment by awakening your sense of grounding. So you'll feel me squeezing your legs and your feet. Is that okay? Something like that. Is that okay? Okay. I'm going to take a few of these off just so you don't have to feel bound by them. How about the one on your third eye? Would you like me to remove that? Okay. Lovely. Okay. So then I'll gently squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. And the shin, squeeze and release, squeeze and release, and the feet, squeeze and release. You can even press up on their feet like that. But again, now that you've brought your client back, you can ask them to gently flutter their eyes open. <laughs> and again, listen and be present. Ask them how they're feeling. Ask them how it felt. Ask them what it was like. You know? Really, don't simply wait to speak. Really be with them. You might be the only person who actually listens to them today, okay? So treat this with the utmost care and consideration. Really listen to their experience. We're not going to do this on camera. We'll do that afterwards. <laughs> You can also offer them some water or herbal tea at this stage. You could do like a hydro infusion with mint or lemon or rose water or even some berries. That could be nice and supportive as well. We just have some options available in case they want that just to keep them hydrated. And rather than just jumping into giving them advice, you really want to encourage them to seek out the answers for themselves. You could suggest certain 
you know, self-healing practices based on your observations from the treatment. But also ask them to search within, within themselves for that inner guidance. Empower them to connect with their inner wisdom and intuition. And then you always want to explain what to expect in the coming days and weeks. Reiki healing can stay with, with you in your system for 21 days. So you could suggest a journaling practice in order for them to record what they've, um, what they're processing and what they've experienced. And finally, this is very important following a healing session. Just make sure that over the next three days specifically, you're drinking lots of water. You're really prioritizing sleep. I know we can't always get, you know, eight, eight and a half hours of sleep like we want, but just really prioritizing that the next few days trying your best to go to bed early, wake up a little bit later if you can move that around in your schedule. Eat, you know, eat the rainbow over the next few days. Try to eat lots of fruits and vegetables and just remain present with what's going on because when we're healing on this deep level, you know, there can be some things that bubble to the surface. So just be aware of that. Just be aware of any of that. It's just there to be processed and healed. So then lots of water, Stay present, stay hydrated, get enough sleep, and spend a few minutes each day, specifically in the next few days, just really connecting with your inner world. Whether that's, you know, just a few moments, or if you can do a little meditation, just even scanning your own body and just seeing what's coming up can be really empowering. So your client is moving through a lot after a session. We're doing deep healing that they're probably not accustomed to on a regular basis. So they could experience things like fatigue, brain fog, headaches, vivid dreams, messages that just flood in. Or they could notice that um, buried emotions are rising to the surface. So just encourage them to tend these and prioritize caring for themselves with self-compassion. Again, a journaling practice is really helpful just to ensure that as they're receiving these messages, they're writing them down and capturing them from spirit. You could also feel amazing and have the best energy that you've ever had over the next few days, but I do want to just prepare you just in case. But all of these side effects, all of them are totally natural and normal and common when we are engaging in this kind of feeling. It's just processing these emotions. Some would call it an energetic detoxification. So just trust the process and always encourage them to seek the help that they need, you know, whether that's through doing research or caring for themselves or reaching out. So again, Reiki is a complement to traditional medicine and not meant to be used in place of seeking professional medical advice. So you can always leave space once you're done with your check-in and chat in order to help them ground and prepare for going back out into the world. So you can leave, give them a moment, give them a room to themselves. You can blow out the candles and give them some time by themselves. But then once they've grounded and they're, they're back and present, then you can say farewell. And you can say, be so what? Namaste. Well. <laughs>